Hello everyone and welcome to Pharmaceutical Calculations with Dr. Dave again. This uh, lesson will talk about reconstitution of powders for oral administration. So again, we're looking at powders and calculations associated with them. For this, we're talking about something that's commonly done in a community pharmacy where you have antibiotics or other types of products that are called powders for reconstitution. Water is added to the powders and you make up a suspension or solution associated with that. You'll notice that when you see these types of products, most often that the volume that the powder inside the container takes up will add to the amount of water and you get a total amount that the final product makes up. So for example here, if you put 94 ml of water into a bottle that had some powder in it, you might create 100 ml. So you don't just magically go from 94 ml to 100 ml when you use that water. It's the powder in that that takes up some space. So let's look at some examples of some calculations that are associated with these types of powders, not only from how to reconstitute them, but how the prescriptions will look as well. So let's take a prescription example here. This one shows a prescription for an amoxicillin oral suspension. So this is an antibiotic suspension. It's the concentration of the suspension. So this is a commercially available product. It's 250 milligrams per 5 ml. So that's what the prescriber here is looking for us to do, is to dispense the 250 per 5 ml concentration. And the SIG is actually given to us in milligrams per kilogram. So it's 7 milligrams per kilogram twice a day for seven days, and it says to dispense a seven-day supply. For us, for the pharmacist, what are we looking at and what do we need to calculate out? First, let's see what we have in terms of a dose, right? This is probably the um, thing that's lacking anything uh, directly given to us is the seven milligrams per kilogram. So let's take the patient's weight. This example here says the patient weighs 48 pounds. We know very quickly we can take the pounds and we can divide pounds by 2.2 and we can get the kilograms of the patient. So if I take 48 and I divide that by 2.2, I'm going to get so 21.81, right? Eight one, etc. That's rounding out. And this is kilograms of the patient. Now it's best if you could keep everything in your calculation calculator at once um, so you round the final answer down. So this is the amount of kilograms, 21.81 that the patient weighs, and the dose is 7 milligrams per kilogram. So I'm going to take kilograms and I'm going to multiply this by 7, right, milligrams, because this is the uh, dose. So this is the amount of kilograms. If I multiply that by 7, I get this, 152.7272, right? This is 152.7272, and that kind of repeats on and on. All right. Now, the um, question states, though, how many ml should the patient take? So there's directions that has to go on the label of this product. What is the patient going to have for a labeled direction? Well, the patient's not going to say, take 152.72 milligrams by mile twice a day for seven days. It's going to say a certain amount of liquid that the person's going to get. We know that the liquid concentration that we're dealing with here is that every 5 ml of this antibiotic suspension contains 250 milligrams of drug. If you know that you want to give the patient 152.7272, et cetera, milligrams, right, per dose, this is the amount of milligrams per dose, what is their dose? So. Every teaspoon of this antibiotic suspension gives you 250 milligrams. If I want to give a dose of 152.7272, I'm looking at about 3.05, right? 3.05 mLs, which we are going to assume for ease that it's about 3 mLs is what we can probably measure out in realistic terms. So the dose that the person is going to take is 3 mLs. It's going to be by mile twice a day for seven days. Now the question is, we have to dispense a seven day supply and we'll do that in a following example lower here on how you would do that. 
So let's look at an antibiotic suspension for another product. And again, it's not always antibiotics, but uh, they are very common antibiotics because usually when you put water in the formulation, the stability of that formulation goes down. So the expiration date of that product, the beyond use date of the product is affected. So by giving the medication in a powdered form, it can stay on the shelf for longer periods of time. And once you put the water in it, that's when you get the expiration or the value state of the product being diminished. So this question says, based on the commercial product shown, so this is an actual label of a product, right? This is Ceftonair oral suspension. This is what the label would look like if you're in the pharmacy. And it says, how many mLs of water should be added to the powder in the bottle? You have to usually look at it. It's usually at the outside or the inside of the container. There'll be some label on the bottle, and it'll tell you what it is. And here it says reconstitute with 35 mLs of water. So how much water is going to go into this? 35 mLs. If you also look, it says that this is a 60 mL bottle when reconstituted. So we're going to add 35 mLs of water into this bottle, and the volume is going to magically go up to 60 mLs. But that magic happens because there's powder in there. So the powder takes up space. Right? And that volume of space that the powder is taking up plus the 35 mLs of water will give us a 60 mL final concentration in terms of our volume once we constitute it. So that's what we're dealing with. So in the pharmacy, when you see these, they're usually labeled by this is a 60 mL bottle. It's a 60 mL bottle when it's reconstituted, not a 60 mL bottle because there's liquid in there for 60 mL, or not because you add that amount of liquid into it. All right. So the second question is, how many days is it So the answer to this question is how many mLs we're going to add 35 mLs of H2O. Right? It's going to be 60 mLs is the final volume. And the date after which the uh, suspension is no longer um, giving the 250 milligrams per 5 mLs is 10 days. We usually call this a beyond use date. Uh, beyond use date means the date after which a commercial product has been um, made and is no longer uh, going to be giving the right dose. So in other words, the effectiveness of that 255 could be lower than what it is. In compounding, we do the same thing. When we make a compounded preparation, we give it a beyond use date. Expiration dates are for commercial products, but once we compound something like here, we're adding water to it, it could be considered a compound, so we're giving it a beyond use date. The other one says if we dispense the 60 ml bottle of suspension, right, will the patient have enough liquid for the full seven days of the therapy? Now, even though this is a moxyl, if we were to say that this was cefzinib, Right. So we're going to say this, right? That it was that drug. So if it was that drug, right? And let's say we gave a 60 ml bottle, would we have enough to actually do it? Well, the dose was 3 mLs twice a day. Right. Two times a day. So they're given 6 mLs per day. If you give 6 mLs a day, and you got 60 mLs, this is going to be giving you a 10-day supply. We only needed a 7-day supply. Sure. What happens with the rest? The patient will throw that out. You can say discard and use portion. Keep in mind that there will be times on these types of calculations and problems where not only will you have to give the dose in milligrams per kilogram, but let's say I gave you a the antibiotic suspension. If I said amoxicillin or moxil is the brand name, 250 per five, and I said I want to give 375 milligrams uh, twice a day. 
how many mls is the patient going to take all right you could do the same thing with this you know that every five mls of the suspension is going to have 250 milligrams of the drug right how much of that suspension if you go if you want 375 milligrams of the drug right so in that case I take 5, divide that by 250, times it by 375, and I'm left with 7.5 mLs. So this would be 7.5 mLs. So there's different ways in which the question can be asked. Most of the time, for what we see in practice, is that uh, the milligrams per kilogram is usually done. Somebody will either put the amount here, or they will give you the mLs amount. You might have to do the mLs amount, and now change this into something where it's a common sort of measurement, which would be teaspoons. So then you take 7.5 mLs and you would say, well, 1 mL, or sorry, 5 mLs is 1 teaspoon, and 7.5 mLs would be 1 and a half teaspoons. And so the directions would be take 1 and 1 and a half teaspoons, 5 mLs twice a day for 7 days, et cetera. All right. So once again, that's reconstitution of powders and the calculations that are associated with these powders for dosing as well as for reconstitution. All right. As always, this is the most important class of measurement that counts.